comes to the diagnosis and treatment of cancer, we've come a long way, especially within the last few years. Radiation treatment in particular has undergone many advances thanks to new technology. Now, joining us to help us understand the role of medical dosimetrists in the, in the Cancer Center of Hawaii, I want to welcome in Gina Walker. Did I say that right? Certified medical dosimetrist? <laughs> Correct. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, we are talking earlier. The great thing about you is you guys work together with a team, a team at the Cancer Center that's trying to just knock cancer out. Can you talk a little bit about that team and how they all work together? So we all have to collaborate with each other on the treatment. So the doctor uh, prescribes the radiation mm -hmm. and uh, he will contour out or delineate out where the uh, tumor volume is on the CT scan. Got it. And then we work in collaboration with the therapist for positioning to make sure that the patient is in a reproducible position mm -hmm. um, as well as something that can work for the treatment uh, plan as well. Yeah, and you're critical as a medical dosimetrist for that treatment plan, right? What is, if someone doesn't know, what is a medical dosimetrist? So a medical dosimetrist is a highly specialized uh, part of the radiation oncology mm -hmm team so we are specifically there to do the planning for the radiation treatment okay. we're behind the scenes and uh, the doctor will prescribe the radiation and we figure out how to deliver that dose of radiation to the tumor um, with limiting the dose to any critical structures that may be around that tumor very very important and, and gosh I was looking at some of the information about it there's not many dosimetrists worldwide. This is a very, I mean, there's not many of you around, right? Right. So uh, the certified medical dosimetrists, there's only about 4,000 worldwide, wow. with about 93% of those being in the U.S. Wow. So we are very specialized. So most people don't know what a dosimetrist is. Very, very few people, when you tell them you're dosimetrist, yeah. like, what's oh. that? And, and, but then also, too, we're so lucky to have you here and explain that. And, and i got to ask, so when it comes to the qualifications, that are required to become a dosimetrist. What goes into becoming a dosimetrist? So to be a dosimetrist, uh, you have to have really good critical thinking mm. skills and a good understanding of radiation physics. There is a... a and that's two <laughs> amazingly different divergent tasks there. That's amazing. Please, please continue. <laughs> and we also have to be very good at reading, uh, seeing CT scans with uh, identifying organs and critical structures on a CT scan so we can delineate those, uh, draw those out so wow. we can actually use those in the planning process. Wow, and, and you, so, I mean, you're working with some cutting-edge technology, but also at the same time, I mean, you're, you're dealing with someone that's dealing with cancer, and, and you and I were chatting before, the schooling that goes into that, and I want to ask a little bit about your journey. How, how did you get started being a dosimetrist? I mean, did you know that's what you wanted to become right off the bat? Um, no, actually, I didn't. As most people, I didn't know what a dosimetrist <laughs> was, um, but I did know what radiation therapy was, mm -hmm. and that's what I initially went uh, to school for, and I was a radiation therapist for about four years, and that is so helpful uh, in being a dosimetrist. And may I ask why? why? Why do you think that's that's so helpful? Because as a dosimetrist, if you had not experienced being a therapy a therapist, you may oftentimes not know what is actually doable with the machine. Interesting. Uh, otherwise, you're looking at a computer, and your computer can do anything. Right, right, right. But the machine has its limitations. Right. So being a therapist first helps you to know those limitations and what actually works. Wow. And you talk about that interaction between patient and machine. Uh, for you, being a dosimetrist and all this technology and all the great things, I guess there's a lot of studying. You still have to keep up every day. I mean, so many changes in the field. Is Absolutely. that true? Uh, yes. Continuing education is important, huh? So we um, are required to keep up with continuing education uh, to hold on to our certification wow. and so our field is ever changing it has changed so much since I first began yeah. uh, doing therapy <laughs> and, I mean really I mean it's something that you got to keep up already and, and I gotta ask you what what has drawn you to this job I mean well I mean it's an amazing field and something that many people were learning about it right now but what this is a field that you just got drawn to or what keeps you in it and keeps you going it's a very difficult field mm -hmm. and most people do ask how can you work in a, such a depressing field but the, the thing is there are so many advances and to see the changes and the rewarding mm -hmm. outcomes often yeah. very comforting mm -hmm. and I have also as most people have had experience with family members or friends that have had cancer mm -hmm. and to know that there is people behind the scenes working on your plan that they've gone through the same thing and they know how you feel and they want you to have the same outcome. Yeah, and I'm glad that you're sharing that, both your personal side and the professional side, because really, I think that's what makes it so great at what you do, because you know what it's like. You've been through the therapy. You know all these things. And the most important things, you want to make everybody better. Oh, thank you so much for sharing this. Thank I've you. learned so much today. And again, we have learned so much out there. If you want more information, again, head to our website. We'll have all the links. Again, we want to knock cancer out. And right here, this is someone that's doing it every day. Now, there's so much more coming up on Living 808 right after the break. Come on back now, you hear?